good news is your dates are here. What's the bad news? They're dead. Oh, you're so cool, Brewster! <laughs> with the chuck. Halloween kills. Let's talk about it. So picking up mere moments after Halloween 2018 or Halloween 40, whatever the fuck you want to call it. I've heard it called both ways. We see Cameron walk through the park calling Oscar and he's pretty much telling him that he fucked up with Allison. Like, I need you, so just call me back. He sees someone laying in the road. He's yelling out to him like, hey, you need help? He hops the fence and we find out that it's Sheriff Hawkins and Hawkins is alive after being stabbed in the throat and getting ran over by his fucking police cruiser. Yeah, he's still kicking. How, why, I don't know, but he is. Then we're treated to the 1978 flashback, which to me is one of the strongest points of this movie. It's probably the top three best moments of this film. Uh, we get to see Lonnie Elam getting picked on by a couple little shit weasels. I don't know who the fuck they are. That's what you get when you fuck with the Mulaney's. Some fucking police officer rolls up and the most like corny dialogue and the dialogue in this movie is complete dog shit. It is so unbelievably cringy. It's so goddamn stupid. It's so bad. The officer goes, you just need to get home. And they're like, why? And then he goes, <laughs> He goes, he murdered three teenagers down the street. And then he just peels off, spinning tires, fishtailing down the road. The most obnoxious part of this movie, besides Anthony Michael Hall's Tommy Doyle. I don't know which is worse. Yeah, during the flashback scene, Aaron Armstrong is playing the shape, which I thought is pretty cool because he, he walks just like James Duke Courtney, kind of stiff and robotic a little bit. But his mask in this, his mask is so fucking sick. It's spot on to the original. Hawkins and his partner go to the Myers house and they're standing in his window and Michael attacks Hawkins' partner. Hawkins comes in, he's trying to shoot Michael, but he ends up shooting his partner like in the side of the neck or some shit. Oh, you motherfucker. I don't know, he ends up dying. Michael like walks down the stairs and he's just surrounded by the Haddonfield Police Department and we get to see the amazing cameo by Tom Jones Jr. He's also the art director of this film and he looks unbelievably spot on to Dr. Loomis. Doesn't quite sound like him though, but he looks just like him. After that, we are introduced to the amazing, it's my favorite score throughout this whole fucking series, is the Halloween Kills theme. The, the choir, the haunting choir, it's just so fucking beautiful. We see all the pumpkins on fire and shit. It's so, so, so sick. After that, we are reunited with Tommy Doyle, Lindsey Wallace, Marion Chambers, Lonnie Elam, and the really awesome, funny black couple from Halloween 2018, the nurse and doctor. They're sitting there bitching about work and everyone else is getting drunk and being obnoxious. And then we get Tommy Doyle on fucking stage talking about his encounter with the boogeyman and oh God, his, delivery, his dialogue, like everything about his performance in this movie can fuck right off if you ask me. If he was not in this movie, he is the worst part of this fucking film. I can't get over that. I mean, I can get over bad writing, bad scripts, you know, whatever. He is the fucking worst part. That is a huge understatement. I just had to get it off my chest. We see Lori, Karen, and Allison picking up, like driving down the truck. Of course, fire trucks are going the opposite way towards the house. And we, the iconic. Oh, God, it burned! Michael ends up fucking all of these dudes up. He walks out on the porch. It's like a side angle. It's when he takes that bar and fucking puts it in his hand and he's just standing there. It is the most insane shot of the whole series. Like it's the most badass moment of Michael Myers. Not only is this trailer for this movie a spectacle, the only issue I have with it, with the trailer is they gave so much away. They, they show all the fucking firefighters die in the trailer. Like that would have been so much better. Lori gets mid to the hospital with Karen and Allison, and then we get a cameo from Charles Cyphers, who was Annie Brackett's dad in the original. He's just kind of sidelined, just like Lori and Hawkins in this movie. They're just, just like Halloween 2, they're just sidelined the whole fucking movie, man. We get to see Michael kill this like old couple 
who are just living the perfect fucking life, flying a drone, getting drunk, like all in their house. <laughs> you know what I mean? But he violently kills, I think his name is Phil. Another amazing sick shot of this movie is when he takes that fluorescent light bulb, breaks it, and stabs Sandra. I think that's her name, Sandra. He stabs her in the, straight in the fucking neck. But like the way he's like turning and like staring at her, it's just so creepy. It's so sick. Like Michael Myers is the greatest. But I feel bad for him because they, they were just living their life, doing their thing. And then old dickhead has to come in and... <laughs> <laughs> kill him. Yeah, the town finds out that Michael's alive after all. Him and Mr. Travoli, 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 the little umbrella guy from Halloween 2018. Though they find out that those are the two people that survived the bus crash. So we get to see Tommy Doyle back at the bar. They're they're getting ready to leave. They see Mr. Travoli in the back seat of their car and they go inside to get Tommy and rally up everyone. Yeah, like we see Mr. Travoli like drive off, crashes the car, and then him and old Huckleberry. <laughs> oh, I can't stand this. Once he gets Huckleberry, man, he starts giving like the most badass like lines. But like I said before, his delivery, it comes off painfully corny. Mask off, look him in the eye. Swing old Huckleberry here. Say night night. Night night. And then we get introduced to Big John and Little John, who one of them is, the, it's Stuart from uh, Mad TV. They're fucking awesome, they're hilarious. Their night gets interrupted by some prank trick-or-treaters. It's a cool little cameo though, because they're wearing the Season of the Witch mask from the uh, Silver Shamrock Company. That's a nice little touch, nice little Easter egg. Karen and Allison both find out that Michael's still alive. What? Allison, she was a smart character in Halloween 2018, and in this one, she's fucking dumb. Yeah, she teams up with Cameron and Lonnie and Tommy Doyle, and pretty much Tommy Doyle starts going around town and getting like a lynch mob, and they're all gun ho and gonna, gonna go after Michael. And after that part, Lindsay, Mary Chambers, and the black couple, which I wish I knew their name. I should have looked it up. I'm a fucking idiot. Yeah, they're all driving around and then they see these kids at the park, which are the prank trick-or-treaters. Lindsey Wallace basically goes up to them, tells them that you gotta go home now, blah, blah, blah. But I like their little exchange going back and forth because the kids aren't taking her serious. They keep making jokes and shit. And then we see Michael off in the distance holding the mask with blood dripping out. And she pretty much tells him like, go the fuck home now. Michael starts fucking everyone up, the black couple, Marion Chambers, Lindsey Wallace, he starts messing them all up. But Marion Chambers gives like some half-assed, this is for Dr. Loomis. And then she tries to shoot Michael. Go fucking figure, she's out of bullets. Michael climbs in the car, kills her of the doctor. He ends up taking a stethoscope, which he is always losing for some reason. I don't have my stethoscope. I forgot my stethoscope. You wear it around your fucking neck. Like how do you, how do you lose it that much? But like he starts strangling Michael and Michael like turns around in the seat, stabs him in the fucking eye. And it's one of the sickest shots of this movie. And like I said, this movie has a lot of problems, but the strong points are a lot of amazing kills, a lot of sick shots. But he ends up killing him, sadly, right through the eye. His wife, <laughs> she walks up shooting Michael, or tries to. Michael kicks the door open and blows her fucking head off. <laughs> Oh my god, it's good, man. It's good. Uh, we see Lindsay Wallace. She fills up a sack full of bricks and whoops the shit out of Michael for a minute. But then obviously he gets the upper hand. She ends up taking off running at the, through the park and the woods. I kind of like like the tension of this, like the cat and mouse. She's hiding by the pond. We get to see Michael like literally stalk his prey in the woods. Like it's, I think we've seen that one other time in Halloween Five. If I remember right. Yeah, Lori ends up waking up from the hospital, boasting and bragging that they killed Michael once and for all. And Karen's like, yeah, we did a good job. They didn't. Hawkins gets wheeled in right past her and then we get to see that they share a bedroom or like a, a room together. They pretty much just start reminiscing about like their past and blah, blah, blah. And she used to like him and they, they used to just have feelings for each other. It kind of goes nowhere with this movie. They faintly touch on it in the next one, which I don't know, to me, it's just like some weird side plot point. Yeah, everyone at the hospital is wigging out and Tommy shows up. He pretty much turns everything from like zero to 100. Evil dies tonight! <sighs> 
Lori ends up going full on fucking junkie mode and takes like some painkillers and just stabbing her fucking stomach and shit. She wants to fight. Mr. Travoli ends up going to the hospital and they think he's Michael Myers. This like five foot two little hobbling old person is Michael. And like I've said a couple times already, this movie is filled with a lot of stupid decisions. They all think it's Michael. So like Tommy gets everyone at the hospital to chase after him. No one can fucking catch this guy for some reason. 300 people in a hotel or a hospital can't catch one crippled guy who is old and, <laughs> you know what I mean? Makes zero fucking sense. Michael shows up to Big John and Lil John's house and sadly this is where he offs them. I got this knife. Let me do it. We get to see another very uncomfortable kill from Michael. This one, he stabs Big John in the fucking armpit which you can just feel that pain, like it just, it's uncomfortable. And then he gouges his eyes out and then little John ends up running upstairs and just stands there and says, Michael, you came home. And we see Michael walk right at him, kill him off screen. It cuts back to the hospital scene with Travoli fucking being chased around. Karen ends up like cornering him and blocks off like this little like section so no one can get him. She pretty much tells him like, I'm not gonna let anyone get you. They break down the door, he fucking, we see Mr. Travoli do a Swanton bomb right off the fucking like fifth, sixth story window. It's sad because like he's not there in the head. We get to see like this really cool like POV shot of him falling and like his bones breaking and shit. Tommy Doyle runs up to the window and right next to him is there's a guy blindfolded chasing Mr. Travoli, but he's blindfolded. What the fuck? Obviously it wasn't Michael and Tommy's all beating himself up over it, which he shook. He's a fucking idiot. Lonnie, Cameron, and Allison, they all link up. They all go to the Myers house. Lonnie tells Cameron, you know, I'll see you at the finish line, pal. He goes in first. He's there maybe five seconds. You hear a gunshot. Lonnie's dead. Cameron and Allison follow. Cameron gets super fucked up in this one. Allison tries fighting him off. He throws her down the stairs. She breaks her leg or I don't know. It looks broken to me. He's like beating him around sticks his head through the fucking like banister. Michael walks past him and breaks his neck. He's getting ready to kill Allison. Karen shows up with this giant ass pitchfork, stabs him in the back, stomps his head in. All right, gives him that A-town stomp. And then she unmasks him. Like, I don't know if you guys can hear it or you guys have heard of it, but I've seen a couple of YouTube videos where Michael actually speaks in the scene when he stands up. Karen's like holding the mask, walking backwards. You can faintly hear him whisper, give it back. <laughs> I don't know. It, to me, it's just like him exhaling. He ends up chasing her, but it leads into the sickest fucking moment. Besides the firefighter scene. It leads into the second sickest moment, because when he's chasing her, the Halloween theme, or Halloween Kills theme plays, which is my favorite one. His mask is in the middle of the street. He goes to pick it up, put it on. The whole mob is there. The whole fucking town is there to whoop Michael's ass. And he looks, you know, side to side, puts the mask on. The movie should have ended right there. That should have been the fucking perfect cliffhanger leading into Halloween ends. But we get to see Michael get his ass whooped by the town for about a good two, three minutes. There's some fucking chick there with an iron for some reason. But then Michael murks everyone, like literally fucks them all up. And he finally kills Tommy Doyle. Oh, I'm just so happy because I hate his character in this movie. He goes home, because that's really all he wants to do is just go home. And the first one and this one, he just wants to go home. Karen's standing in his window and we hear him like breathing. He ends up killing Karen, which I liked her. I didn't love her character, but I liked her. And then the movie just ends. That was Halloween Kills. First time I saw it, opening night, I was not a fan. I loved the kills, but I hated the movie. Watching it this time around for the review, I found myself enjoying it more, but it's one of those, it's good, not great. You know I mean? There are so many great Halloween movies. Well, I shouldn't say there's so many. There's quite a few stinkers. I take that back. This just falls like right in the middle for me. I don't love it. I don't hate it. Overall, I give it three pumpkins. On to Halloween ends. One of the worst fucking things I've ever seen. But until then, don't forget to like, subscribe, you know, even share the video too. Give me a thumbs up, turn the bell notification on, do all that fucking jazz for me, all right? Till then, see you later.